Alrighty, hello and welcome back. Okay, now there is a lot going on on screen, but I want you to see how fast the clear speed is while I'm catching you up on a bunch of stuff. So, as you can see right now, we're about to hit level 600,000 in the dungeon, the main dungeon. Our frames per hour, or FPH, is 5460. That's where it hovers pretty much, and when it turns green, it means you've kind of sustained that. And I'll explain the comp here and like how, why we, uh, why we doing what we're doing here. Uh, when we warp, we warp way, way far. Uh, and that ability is a wizard ability. Again, that's what makes the wizard so amazing. I've learned that the classes themselves are just super. There's so many different reasons why you want all the different classes. But um, I am actually going to try to let you see the janitor because I have a whole another thing to explain on that as well. Um, also, very important to note, um, there are things that you can click on the screen so you don't have to exit the run to see. If you click down here, it'll give you a full summary of everything that you've, um, um, everything you've obtained during that run. So if I click that, you can literally see everything. We, we've made 27.2 trillion gold. We've been running for 46 hours, 91,000 floors, 888 million essence. 23,700 battle uh, tokens, and then you get you can see all the other loot. So you don't have to end the run. And if I click this, you can see if I wasn't, if I didn't have the warps going for the way I currently have it set up, I would actually only be doing 1963 floors per hour, but with the warps, it's 5458 uh, right now. Okay, now I'm gonna do this manually because I wanna show off the, um, I wanna show off the, uh, what am I trying to say? the uh, janitor. I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm not I'm not thinking. We're gonna we're actually gonna skip that. And you can just hit the number four uh, in this case to use the magic claw which again that's the fastest AoE clearing thing you can do. So as you can see I've really optimized how quickly whoops uh, how quickly we get through the kills here so and the reason I want to show this off is because um, the janitors, we're actually not fighting regular janitors, we're fighting, um, we're fighting elite janitors. And so I want you to actually see the, the, the comp of what that looks like. Okay, we're almost there. Now normally this would be going way faster as you have just seen, but um, I'm just kind of doing this. Okay, so here's, here's what's going to happen. Oh, no, it's not the janitor. This is actually something else I wanted to cover. When you get to each 100,000 mark, you get an elite version of the bosses with a bunch of other guys. And this has a chance to drop a, an extremely rare item that you use to create the sword that we're going for. I know this sounds like so much stuff, but I'm sorry, uh, I have to just kind of go through it quickly right now because it's all right here. I thought this was going to show the janitor, but of course, it is not. And we did not get it. We got two billion out of that gold. I'm going to turn this auto back on and just kind of go over some stuff now. Okay, so hopefully maybe we'll see the janitor this time and I might have to stop it. But anyways, bottom line here, what we're going for here is janitor elite kills. And in addition to that, we're also trying to get to nine, floor 900,000. And then we get the Sword of Space and Time, I think is what it's called. And that enables us to warp even further per warp. So what happens is this comp gives you the wizard cast foretell okay and that gives you additional warps ahead that's what that is foretell and then I, he also has a gem in his this right here is a mythic gem drop which i'll go over all the mythics that i currently have uh that adds plus three to your warp as well and that's why this frames per or i'm sorry floors per hour is so high um so all that to say this is this is the highest 50 about 5460 to 5480 it's about as high as i've ever seen the floors now he did cast foretell i'm going to do this manually again even though it's painfully slow but i think i know what i'm how to make it keep going here um it's much slower normally i'd war i'd want to warp but i'm slowing it down intentionally so i can show you the janitor when he turns into an elite and the, again, the, the reason we're doing the elite stuff, you have first of all, you have to have two legendary uh, items equipped for the elite janitors to even spawn. And then once they spawn, obviously you have to win, clearly, because otherwise that would be bad if you lost, right? Um, and once you kill 10,000 elite janitors, you unlock the janitor as a playable character. 
and what he does, why he's so important is he completely eliminates all janitors. So he's got 5 HP because I have max withering. He killed himself on us. I didn't even do that, but you at least got to see it. Sorry that was so fast. But anyways, the elite janitors, 10,000 of them, that's 1 million floors. Now, if you're trying to kill the janitor, like you're trying to get janitor kills, it's probably more wise not to use a warping comp. And I'll be using the word comp as just, you know, the composition of the team. Um, but um, I'm using this, since I'm trying to progress the floors anyways, I don't really care. When I get janitor, elite janitor kills, that's great. And when I don't, oh well. Most of the time it skips past them. But as you can see, this is extremely fast. Now, I used to run one key, like the key blade, to make sure I had enough keys. But as you can see, even with this running as long as it has, we have 2,700 extra keys. So, oh, here's another example of the janitor. He, he does a move, um, and then we end up, he ends up killing himself with reflect damage, which is actually kind of funny. Um, you can see my health is very high. Uh, I also have fairies the healing fairies turned on and then obviously the warp portals turned on but i don't have anything else turned on uh in this in the castle there's really nothing i need to drop so i'm not too worried about item find as much but i do think it's relatively high anyways um i know that there's a windows update in the background and i'm worried that i'm going to lose this run and since it's been going for 46 hours i don't want to lose this progress so let's go ahead we're just going to go ahead and uh I'm actually going to let it go all the way up to 600,000 and 300 something, unless it warps right here. Okay, it's going to warp, of course. Okay, I'll let it go three more levels in, a couple more here. It's probably going to warp again. Okay. Oh, and did you see that little pop-up right there? He's using the gold stein, or the, I forgot, the soda stein as a weapon. And anytime you hit melee, there's a, I think it's a 14% chance to give you a, re a free relic uh, upgrade and that one that popped up was essence so since i've had this running for what seems like forever i'm just getting free relic upgrades as well now if you have uh, extreme ocd you might not like that but i'm trying to get over that um okay uh, and then i'll quickly explain she has the rod of cleansing which means uh what was in what ended up killing me with this with this comp for a while was we would get burn damage or something and they would just burn out and die so i added her normally you'd want the um the dark lord here and then you'd have him with the sword of time and he would be critting and then this guy would go and so on everything else would stay the same by the way huntresses are amazing not because of their damage so much but because each one of them reduces the cooldown of of every um spell in the in the in the group so by having three of them it reduces the cooldown of his ability to um make the next warp the foretell that he that he casts he can do it much quicker so like i think it has a six five or six turn cooldown but with these three i think it's i think it's a five turn cooldown and it drops it to two because we have three of these so that's why this comp works um and then this guy um the tavern owner he makes he speeds up the um the, the magic clock so it makes it go even faster than it normally would so that's why we're using specifically what we have in this comp um very well done and like i said i've learned a ton these are uranium shields and then these gems are uranium gems which is plus four percent to all stats um it's it's gotten nuts since the last episode let's go ahead and exit out because i got a, some other stuff i want to i want to show you as you can see all new records on everything clearly um i'll go through just quickly some of the ingredients i got in that amount of time and uh, we got 105 uh, obsidian. You're going to need that. We have 588 total. And that's pretty much all. Wait, where was the... Okay, we got 367 green smithing crystals. We need those because, you know, we use those for um, the plating. Uh, the rest of the yellow, red, and blue, you'll probably... At this point in the game, you'll be capped on all that. But the rest of the stuff is nice. And um, it's also important to know... Let's see. Did we get any? We did not. Wow, that's actually kind of funny. Well, the thing you need for the janitor, you need the mop bucket and you need the wet floor sign. And that is considered a legendary uh, item. There are two legendary accessories. And you have to have that on one of your people, which in my case is, I believe, the bottom right person. Um, otherwise, elite janitors won't spawn. Okay, now, because we got that far uh, in the dungeon, let's go ahead and let's look at this. So... 
At level 5,000, you get the cleansing rod, which is really important, okay? 10,000, 20,000. Their, uran their radioactive rods are actually quite good. At 50,000, you get this, the, this blade here, which is decent enough. At 70,000, you can make the radioactive shields. At 90,000, you get five more soda slots if you need them. We unlock the Claw Buster, I believe. And then we've got this the Cosmetic Crown and this. And again, what we're going for, 50% uh, uh, Crystal Refund when dismantling. That's actually good, because there's some things I want to dismantle. This is, you know, whatever. This is what we're going for. I think I've showed this off before, but 999, and you want it to basically crit every time. And what that does is it adds a level every time you crit until the next warp. So you can get you can get even further faster and that's how you're going to get to um level two million at least ideally plus you can push the primal lands even farther if you want to which again i'm not fully done farming mythics there but that's just i mean it is what it is okay so that covers that now let's let's back up a minute in primal lands okay well in primal lands I don't even remember how far I've gotten at this point, but basically where we left off in the last episode, um, I had shown off Gia, which is the final boss. Once you beat her, I forgot to mention, the Dark Lord will actually give his sword to, to the little broski that's standing here. And uh, that what that means is you can then, when you hire this guy, you can then equip um, any swords you want on the Dark Lord, which at first I thought, when I first saw it, I thought it was a nerf because I didn't know what I was losing. But it turns out, obviously, being able to pick what equipment you want on him is actually a gain, a net gain, not a loss. So, at first I was worried, but no. It turns out that's amazing. So, when you do beat that, that's what happens. And then uh, you can you can gear out your, uh, your Dark Lord accordingly. So, that's great. Now... Let's look at our relics. We have one, so with the bonus, I didn't even notice what the bonus was, but that, that ended up netting us 1.1 billion essence. Now, let's look at where we're at here. As you can see, I've done quite a bit of work, and I don't know if I've mentioned it, I think I mentioned it in the past episode. Gold find, health, and magic. If you're using the Phantasmal Claw, you need magic attack, but by far gold is the most, um, impactful with progression and that's how i've been able to pump some of these other relics and then uh, of course you need health to be able to just last essentially now um, these are all capped since the last time you saw it and then of course you didn't see any of the relics but of course on this save i have all the relics and this is where their levels currently stand they're all different weird numbers because when we use that item uh, it levels something up randomly, and I think when I first had this set up, I believe I had everything but these two were at level 2,000. All right, I think that's around where it was, and these were at like 3,500-ish, I believe, and now they're where they currently are, and then these have just been leveling up accordingly. So, what, what do we want to level up? I'll get to that in a moment because I'm not really sure exactly how I'm going to do this. And if I wanted to convert all that money, I'd only be getting another, well, actually, that's a lot, 3.9 billion. That's actually a lot. Okay, that's great. Um, but one thing to consider, that's, you know, 27 trillion, it sounds like a lot, right? But what we're, what we're actually going for, and I've actually already purchased all the oddities all the way up through... 500 trillion i need this as a frames per hour time saver but more importantly i need this and that is way more than what i have even this is already way more than what i have that's like t that's more than 10 times what i currently have right and then that is you know way more than that it's like a thousand times what i have or something i don't know what the math comes out to be now i did buy this one and uh you know i don't it's debatable how good this is i think this was like um five billion five trillion or something like that i don't know if that's worth it but i did it anyway so i've unlocked all this stuff so that's great and then also another thing that i did well let's look at this real quick um okay yeah so it's this and you know at some point i mean i'll probably craft this but it's it's obsidian and i don't really want to waste the obsidian right this second but i will craft that at some point just so that i can have the completion of it um we'll get to all that in a minute though god there's so much to go over so i'm sorry if i'm just this seems so ridiculous. Um, on her, I've, I've, I've really set up my um, my progression for all this stuff. So once again, this saves your characters, what's equipped. It saves 
whatever scripts you had set up that these guys were on, it saves the script layout so you don't have to constantly change that and it saves the pet. So I have a castle push. This is what it's going to look like when we get rid of the nurse and we get that the, the sword of time and space or whatever it is, right? And then this is what I'm actually running currently with a uh, status resist pet just so that I can really, really push it until we get that sword. Now, I have an, uh, an ore farming setup that I kind of need to revise, but four, four miners and then the tavern keeper and the chef. And I, I'm going to go over like some of this stuff in, in the, like the next episode for scripts and stuff. But um, I also have just a gold, mythic, and janitor farm where I'm, I'm not warping, essentially. And then I have a boss rush, which is like an arena boss rush. Um, I may actually want to show that off for just a minute here but that one can also go for a while so i may actually run that one and uh maybe we'll end with that just so that you can see what it looks like um but yeah okay now relics we've gone over that we've gone over why we're using the nurse and all these other things so that's that's fine and i probably need to hire this so you can see what i have equipped okay so boom there it is um now i have pretty much everything gold plated uh, one thing that is important is to have the Midas Sword because of the 0.55 gold multiplier. It's also important, ideally, and we need, I need to go over Mythics, but this is a Mythic coin. 50% chance to double or half each enemy's gold. So basically, it will, it will double one while it halves another, which is already a net positive. This is also why I made 27 trillion gold. So just keep that in mind. Um, these are just, um, these are Labradite, uh, Talisman, which is just some bonus stuff here. But this is the, uh, items I was talking about. Wet Floor Sign and the Mop Bucket. And you have to have both those on, and then the Elite Janitors will spawn. Okay, now, this is the Soda Stein, which I was trying to tell you, not only does it give you item find and boost to all stats, but it also gives you... Um, um, oh, that's that's the gold plating. Sorry. It also gives you 12% chance to level up a random relic on hit. If you're running a build where, like, the way that the scripts work is she'll cleanse automatically, otherwise she just defends, and then he'll either cast Foretell, or if there's one target, he'll hit the one target and kill him, and if there's two targets or more, he'll immediately use the claw, right? And then also, this is a mythic accessory that prevents all status effects, and this is that mythic gem that adds plus three levels to warp. So I know there's a lot going on here, and I'm sorry if this is a little overwhelming, but there's definitely a lot to cover. Now, that's the, that setup, and then the other thing is the bit brand is also a mythic weapon, but you can get those pretty, I would say, relatively easily. Um, the crit chance and crit damage is good. What you really care about is the 19% withering, and with this comp, we're looking at a 1.54 gold multiplier. The essence multiplier is great. That's really good. We have 90% withering, which is the max you can get, which means 90% of their health is removed, as well as their attack, I believe. Um, should have more than enough chance to find dungeon keys, but also you'll note we have a 1.46 um, uh, essence multiplier as well, which is why we got so much essence. We only get three battle credits per boss, and that's due to some due to some of the armor that we're wearing, and I'll show that off next. So the, the armor pieces that, uh, of choice that I have here are going to be the Extinction Plate, Battle Credit, 49% HP, Increase, and Item Find, okay? And then for the, for the these are all the Tangle Heart, uh, and this is 14% Withering, 58% Boost of Magic, mainly because I'm running the Claws on those guys, whoops. And then... Um, and then you also have a chance to evade. So these these three just have a high chance to evade. So if I click on just one, where can we find the evade? Um, it's really t okay. Forty seven percent chance for her to evade, whereas for him it is a fifty eight percent chance, and so on. So okay, and then each one of those gems is four percent boost to all stats. So there's that. Now. Let's look at all of our um, mythics here. So we have the pick, which is a unique only. You're only going to find one 999 ore bust and plus 50 to ore. So I use that in one of my mining comps. We have the uh, Silver Baron Staff, which is boost to magic. It also gives you item find. It also has a 100% chance to freeze whatever it hits. 
so decent enough and you also get a, a, a gem slot which is nice and you can have as many of those as you want uh, the Blade of Ancients, <clears throat> once again, you can have as many as you want. Nice crit multipliers, but it gives you a chance to evade instead of the Bit Blade, which is withering, right? So, the it also has an Essence multiplier, so that's decent. Now, Gravedigger Shovel, I would, I would be running this in this comp, and I just can't really fit it into how I want to run it currently, but most people are going to run this. This is a unique, so you're only going to get one, and what it does is it actually makes the enemies harder. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, because they drop more gold. So, if I was running this, I might have had closer to like 35 trillion. I don't know. Um, I, that's just a guess, but the bottom line is I'm not going to do it right now. Now that I added the nurse, I could probably get away with it pretty easily, but I just want to keep progressing and get to 900,000 first, and then I'll worry about it. That could be, that could be a mistake. I could, I should probably should be running this, but anyways, you have the void, uh, void soul reaper eliminates any target, um, uh, or I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's basically an auto kill, but it, it makes your HP one. I haven't really messed around with this, but I'm sure it's probably really good. So yeah uh, a couple of other weapons i wanted to cover is the Widowmaker. is you get from when you unlock the blacksmith and this is actually this is a unique and it's quite good the sweeping smash is really good if you don't want to use the claws for for whatever reason um, we did craft this this is also a unique um it's kind of neat with the item find and stuff before you get to mythics uh this is the uh, i'm not even going to try to pronounce that chameleon Camellio Blade. I don't know. I just said I wasn't going to say it, and then I did. 34% uh, chance to evade. This is what a radioactive rod looks like, and it's just 14% boost to all stats, 19% attack increase, and then it's actually pretty high damage. This is what happens when you get, or like what you get when you uh, unlock the wizard uh, damage reduction. I mean, I would say that's, re again, early game, early to mid, it's probably okay. Uh, this is the Ophotic Blade 2, which is also unique. 1.0 1, uh, 1 Essence Multiplier, so if you're trying to multiply Essence, you could go for this. But I will say, gold, scaling gold is gonna is probably going to make you a heck of a lot more uh, upgrades than scaling uh, Essence. That's just, that's just what I've read and heard. Uh, the Essence Reaver is pretty decent, and the Glass Warden is alright. Uh, pretty low you know, attack, but it has kind of a cool, it's a slow animation for judgment, but it's kind of neat. Um, and then I think I showed this off in the last episode, but this is the level 10 version of this staff. The tuna buster is another one from the primal lands. The ancient staff is another one from the primal lands. And I'm just trying to show this off so you can see what it looks like. The level 10 bone dagger. I think I mentioned I didn't know why I was going with the swords. Well, that's because the swords go up to 16% withering, so they're just superior. Uh, even though they're slightly less damaged, the withering is worth it until you can get um, until you can get the direct replacement, which would be the bit brand. But um, until you get those, just run these because you need as much withering as you can get to make progress. And then the tar shiv, that's what that looks like. Uh, I also crafted a ruby sword, so you can get withering off ruby swords, which is actually pretty decent. So you don't even technically need to farm as long as you can get rubies. You'll have to farm rubies, but as long as you can get rubies, you can make that. Also, don't overlook the treasure shovel. This thing gives you 28% item find and 5% essence. So on early, very early game comps, this can be really good for item find. And then uh, the frying pan, don't overlook this. 25% chance to receive food on hit at level 10. It also has a chance to burn. So if you're trying to farm ingredients, and I'm an idiot and didn't realize this in the early game, just did not put two and two together, you can run these uh, with frying pans early game and get the ingredients you need to complete the quest. I should have been doing that, but I just, for whatever reason, I just didn't put it together. So... And then this is that uh, infected blade where you can you can you have a really decent chance to poison with this blade early game. Again, it's not very useful now, but okay. For shields, this is the only uh, mythic shield. Um, it has uses, but it's not super great. If you don't have this, go ahead and just run the cosmic shields since they give you a slot for a gem. Uh, and then these are also legendary shields that just give you item finds. If you're trying to stack item find, that's great. Uh, the Dino Shield, if you want Damage Reflect, I guess that's decent enough, but I don't really use it much. 
The Mammoth Shields, on the other hand, are absolutely amazing. Not only do they give you an HP boost, but one battle credit per boss defeat. Now, once you can start running the arena, you won't really need this per se, but it's not it's not bad to have it. And if you don't have those shields, you can just run something like the Power Shield or the Stoplight Shield. Um, and then the rest of the shields are pretty uninteresting. Uh, we did we we covered well we did not cover all the uh, armor so garb of grease lord that's another one uh, that's tons of reflect damage health and ore find and then it also prevents poison flat out uh, I don't know if I mentioned this but the tangle heart completely Im you're completely immune to sleep so that's good um, and then so that's the tangle heart there then we have the Evercrag damage re uh, reduction. So if you had like if you're running the blacksmith as like a tank, you might want to run something like this. HP increase and 30% additional status resist, and it prevents stone, so that's kind of nice. And then the shark in suit, 109% um, crit damage, 39% uh, attack speed. This is at of course at max level, um, and it has an essence multiplier, and it prevents speed down. So these are great. These are all really good. And then the only other one that uh, I think I was trying to show off was this one. This one prevents burn, the extinction plate. It's just not in there because I have all three of the ones that I have equipped. So, And then I also made the radioactive suit, which is a decent le uh, legendary you can make before you get the uh, mythics. 14% um, attack, some damage reflection, 14% boost to all stats. That's pretty decent. You can also make the platinum armor before that, which is uh, just an HP boost and some damage reflection. But other than that, I would say the rest of this is very unimportant. And then we go to, okay, so let's look at all of our unique uh, accessories. And I still don't have everything, so keep it, keep that in mind as well. 2,000% uh, damage reduction on the Belt of Burris. We have the Circuit of Binary, which is 100% boost to magic attacks. Eh. We have the Wraps of Tengen, which is 15 speed. That's great, because that means you can put other people to go first. So that's really good. Uh, goggles of Gone, that's great. 100% chan uh, crit chance, very good. And you'll notice some of these, I think these names, I'm almost positive these names are from, uh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's from Soda Dungeon 1. I knew I recognized those names. Because I just finished a playthrough um, of Soda Dungeon 1, and then I launched this uh, this series. So anyways, uh, just Cape of Julius, 250% crit damage, very good. Also unique, so you're only ever going to get one. And then this Mask of Garrick uh, cannot go below 1 HP unless already at 1 HP. That basically just means you can't get one shot. But you could you could get hit hard enough to get one shot, go down to 1 HP, and then have burn tick and still kill you. So you're not invincible, but it's quite good. Um, and then some of the other things we made. Well, first of all, you can see I have 6 wet floors and 11 mop buckets. Of course, I've been farming my butt off, so... You know, you're probably not going to see that many of them unless you're just doing the same thing I'm doing. Now, the Prism of Precision is actually pretty decent. Uh, the Knifey Glove is basically just melee attack compared to our um, what we're using, which is uh, magic attack. Plus, it's slightly slower, so I don't I don't use it. But what you will use, or especially early game, is going to be the uh, Malachite Talisman. Uh, gives you five withering, five HP, and increases uh, attack uh, attack increase by 10% quite good as a matter of fact i'd say that's probably one of the best uh, things you can get especially early to mid game all right the, this is decent uh, just mp regen and hp regen we got the opal talesman uh again that's all right i made a couple but yeah and then slow stone you may think there is absolutely no reason why i would want this but yes you do in fact need it i have two of them they're actually kind of annoying to craft um i don't remember why but they kind of suck but anyways uh, if you want somebody to not go first, so like as an example, if you want the Dark Lord in your comp, and I have a specific setup where all I want him to do is kill janitors, but I don't want him to go first every every time, like every turn, uh, or I'm sorry, every like floor, you put that on him and it gives minus 50 speed, which means he will no longer go first. He will only do his script when the janitor shows up. So, very good. You know, at first I looked at that, I'm like, why on earth would I want that? But anyways, don't forget about these too. These are 30% status resist. I still use these in-game. You can still get nice item find and damage reduction on this if you want it. I basically never use the back protector. Uh, and then the rest is mostly irrelevant except for the Phantasmal Claw, which is what I was talking about. This is the magic version. Um, if you really needed to make sure your guy can't be put to sleep, you'd use that. And this prevents burn and stone. 
And uh, yeah, other than that, uh, I haven't really even used the fishing rod. I hear that there's really not much of a reason to do so, but at some point I'll mess around with it. Okay, that was a ridiculous amount of information. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll end this off by hiring my um, my comp. And look at this. See, I'm using slow st dual slow stones just for this setup right here. So basically, these guys are never going to go. All of our damage is going to come from the Blade Masters. Now, why, you know, Blade Masters are, can be really good because you can put dual weapons on them. So we can have Uranium Rods down one side and then the Withering down this side. I have Cleanse here, more Bit Brands. The Gold Plating, you can just ignore that. That does not matter. Um, but yeah, let's just see, let's just see how they do for this. What, what am I looking for here? Um, okay. So we'll do boss rush here, and then I'll try to summarize. By the way, the boss rush... Okay, well, let me back up a minute. When you're first playing the game, you do actually probably want to do the lower and mid tiers of this because you can get a lot of gold and a lot of um, essence by doing these. I completely ignored this because of the, the lockout-like timer, but honestly, it would probably be wise if you did. So if you did use them to your advantage. So anyways, not too bad. Boss Rusher, on the other hand, I don't think that unlocks until the end of the game once you've defeated the final boss. I could be mistaken. But um, basically, that's how you're going to farm. That's the better way to farm the battle credits and the green crystals. So let's go ahead and do this. And I'm going to end it on this so you can see what the frames per, per hour are going to be. So here we go. And remember, this is with Withering. So no matter what happens, they're going to... Um, oh, if it wasn't obvious, when you come in here to do this, you can see the health and all that stuff is very low. It's because you, your relics have no effect in here. So it's only what you can equip. So um, you'll notice I have the attack pet. And you'll the way I have the script set up, only the right side attacks for the most part. So the left side is all in defend status. And there are certain bosses that will always go first, no matter what. So that's just how it is. And you can see we're doing 18,236 uh, floors per hour at this rate. Now this obviously is not going to last forever. Uh, I think the longest I ever had this one, this particular setup last, and I'm, and I'm going to be improving this build as I go, but this is just where I currently am at. Um, the longest I had it go was about an hour and 30 minutes which is almost the two hour wait, right? And uh, I got quite, I got like 60,000 battle credits, maybe it's 56,000 battle credits, something like that. And like 1,800 of the green crystals. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was pretty, it was pretty decent for where I feel like I am in the game. So yeah, all this will evolve uh, once I unlock the janitor. Now, <clears throat> to, has, yeah, as a final summary, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to cover. I've already covered that. Oh, as far as like item find goes, just to just so that we can leave it off on kind of a an interesting note. Um, first of all, from what I understand, you cannot in the Primal Lands, which is the only place you can get Mythics. Um, you you need to be on flo level f uh, floor four thousand or higher, right? Um, Although I've heard that you can get, you can start getting the gems at 1,000 or higher, but the wiki says 4,000 or higher, so that's what I'm going to say for now. Um, and you cannot get them with auto battles, so don't go in there blowing all your auto, uh, your your like battle tokens, thinking you're going to see a bunch of mythics. And also, it's it's about one every four hours, so it's not like Soda Dungeon One where you could come back and have you know hundreds of mythics. Um, and then in addition to that. In order to get the right amount of item find, you want between 1 to 99, and you can get rare, legendary, and mythic, with mythic being the least likely. If you have item find 100 to 199, you're going to get legendaries and mythics, and it's going to kind of just cut rares out of the pool altogether. And then if you get 200 plus, you're going to get mostly mythics, but again, it's not going to completely cut legendaries. You're going to be getting legendaries as well. Um, and you're still going to get some rares, too. They're just going to be much lower on the, the the way the formula works. So, as an example, if you wanted to find um, rare items, the max you'd want item find-wise is 99. And that would be, like, the crystals and stuff. Like, like if you're farming crystals and other things like that. <clears throat> Whereas, if you're going for legendaries, you only legendaries, you might want to get up to about 199. That'd be, like, the best stat you could have. But the second you hit 200... You're gonna be. You're gonna start getting probably more mythics. Although 
you know, that's the way they explain it on the wiki, but honestly, it's not like you're going to be seeing a lot of mythics. So, I'm running like 300, 380 or so. Um, I've seen um, another YouTuber that taught me a lot here that I know, the, the Kloosh or whatever that guy's name is that I was talking about in the last episode. Um, I've seen him run upwards of eight 800 item fine, and it still wasn't super impressive. So, it's just a really, really low drop rate, no matter what. But, um, yeah. Um, as I mentioned before, all the classes are extremely useful. The chef in, in particular, uh, he has so many different uses once you level him up and get all the food, like, combos. Um, you can use him to boost your character, like, uh, XP mastery, uh, and then power level classes and stuff. It's just, there's, there's so much, um, versatility for all the classes. It's, it's, it's ridiculously complicated, but in a good way. Um... And then, other than that, oh, I wanted to show off the how many janitors I had killed, like elite janitors. So I'm actually going to exit this in a minute just to show that off. Um, I haven't really shown a whole lot about the plating, but I guess I'll get into that in the, in the next one. I guess I'll just stop it here because I'm not really doing this um, for the actual progression here. So we'll just go ahead and stop that. I meant to do that before. <clears throat> So we got 981 battle credits that fast and only 15 crystals. Uh, uh, the higher you go, the more the bosses drop battle credits and crystals. So obviously you want to go as far as you can. And then in order to see how many janitors versus elite janitors you've killed, this is where you go. So I've killed 11,307 janitors total, but only 4,396 have been elite. So <clears throat> I'm a little over... Like, I'm not even halfway there, but I'm I'm a little over a third of the way there. Or maybe two-thirds. I don't know. I can't do math when I'm being recorded here, clearly. Bottom line, I've still got a long ways to go. So, if this was 4,000, I would need 6,000. So, six, so 5,600-ish. 5,604 is what I need. That's a lot more janitors. Uh, elite janitors. So... Um, the next time I come back, I hope to have that part done as well as I will have already most likely unlocked um, the, um, I'll show it one more time. I will have already hopefully unlocked this and be using this regularly. So you'll probably see uh, all my gear has changed and stuff like that. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to touch base and show that off. And <clears throat> again, I know it's a huge um, information dump, but I, I do hope that it's useful and uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Uh, if you found yourself enjoying the video and you do appreciate the info, if you don't mind hitting that thumbs up button, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, if you're not subscribed, now would be an amazing time to do it. And I do hope to see you in the next episode. Have a good one.